Hello everyone and welcome back guys to a brand new video where today we're here for round one and two of the Delta Online Racing VW Beetle GRC Bug Cup at Homestead Road. Yeah, this one has something a little bit different. Delta Online Racing are finally back and this time out they're in the, v, uh, the VW, I should say, Global Rally Cross Car for five round series taking us across the globe. Very much looking forward to this series as you guys will probably know. Uh, you know, some of you that watch a lot of the videos on my channel, you know, uh, Global Rally cross cars generally seem to go quite well for me. Obviously, I qualified for the Dirt 4 Esports. I'm not doing too badly in them over on iRacing either. And yeah, you know, these cars, I don't know what it is. I just really, really enjoy driving them, whether it's on a circuit, whether it's on iRacing, whether it's pretty much anywhere else. I just, yeah, they're really, really good, fun cars. For the opening round, though, of the season, we qualified in P3. Obviously, only one lobby here. It's like 20 car grid, though. Hopefully in it for some good racing as it lights out and away we go there. Not off to the particularly brilliant start though. It's going to be DR Outlaw getting the run on the outside. We move to the inside just trying to bend into turn one there and get very, very loose on the cold tires. They're almost, I wasn't really intending to try and go for a move back at the inside of Outlaw there. It was just a case of I thought I'd have broke myself in to him there. That time round we thought about having a bit of a sniff there. But he does swing it back right around the outside there as we come through turn two. And at turn three, we're going to try and get the run on the exit of the corner there, just to keep the front wing, or well, say the front wing, sorry, the nose even, up the inside there. And that is now going to be us side by side into the next corner. They're almost running to the back of Lucky Sob, but luckily we both get away with that one there. And sadly, Outlaw does get the run up the inside there as we come out of the corner onto the back. So little straight away there, and well, Lucky Sob, unfortunately, is going to run a bit wide there. And that's going to be an open door us up into P3 here. We tried to go for a move up the inside of Outlaw there. And it was a bit strange. You know, I asked him in the party whether there had been some like, laggy contact there. And he said, you know, there was a tiny bump. But he reckoned he was also like, missing the corner anyway. Because, you know, I did say, obviously, if I punched him, I'd be happy to give him back the place. And, yeah, unfortunately, oh, fortunately for me, even, I should say, he did say no. Don't worry. Just continue on. So we're up to P2 then. Towards the end of lap one. We're trying to come to the back of WRT Sweden Pro. We look very... Very quick in qualifying there, you know, running a mid-23, which, yeah, I mean, in qualifying, you've only got three laps to go for it. So he seems to be able to get it to pace very, very quickly in these cars. As we now skip on all the way to lap six of this race. We're just slowly but surely closing down the gap to Sweden Pro here. And this looked like one of the only places he was particularly weak on this track there. Constantly running wide at the hairpin there. And we're going to try and take the invitation up the inside there. We're going to be side by side. As we come back out on to the oval here, obviously we don't do any of the oval banked corners here. We just go down to the inside here. And this corner is really, really difficult to try and get right there. We give Sweden Pro the run on the outside here. This is fantastic side-by-side -side racing as we come in towards the final couple of corners of the lap. And we're trying to hang him out to dry there. He then parks it on the apex there. Just ever so slightly cut the corner just to try and avoid any more contact than we needed there. We're about to get a better run until, unfortunately, I clipped a cone as we come down at the start finish straight there and it's still side by side there as we're going in towards turn one and turn two there once again given the room on the outside once again just a little bit of contact there but this time around we get the car up at the inside defend as we come into turn three there and that was you know a good four five corners effectively half of the track there side by side you know that was really really good racing with sweden pro there but now we're up into the lead of the race here and we really do need to try and pull out a little bit of an advantage over these next couple of actions, trying to build a little bit of safety if you know we end up with any issues with this car later on in the race. Fuel strategy as well was something that was really, really interesting. With this being a global rally cross car, it, it burns through its fuel tank and it's not exactly a big fuel tank as well. There. As we come to the end of lap 8, I make a bit of a mistake through the final chicane there. I was going to try and dive in to the pit lane there, but Sweden Pro. Obviously, just a lack of communication between the parents. The accent sends me around. I didn't lose too much time for it. It was definitely sort of a good three or four seconds there. And that was sort of even five seconds, according to the Delta. So not ideal on the end of a lap eight. But, you know, we would try and continue on and close back up this gap over, you know, the pit stop window. Everyone would. I don't think, you know, we've really... I think we gained a little bit through the pit stop window. But I think that was just due to a little bit of pace as well. And by lap 11, you know, we were all at the back of Sweden Pro once again here and I was a little bit confused at this stage because DOR Outlaw have been able to collect quite a big gap to him so I thought you know he might have had damage or something like that as we come in towards the final couple of corners of a lap 11 here and we're just all over the back of him once again and his pace has definitely seemed to have dropped off from the first in there so come out of the final corner 
on to start lap 12 of this race. We're going to be able to get a run around the outside here. As we come in towards turn 1, he's just going to bail out there. And I wasn't really too sure what was going on at the time. I honestly thought, you know, it was a bit of an apology for the incident earlier on. But no, it turns out he's just going to try and make the one-stop work in this race, which is certainly a bit of an interesting gamble in towards the later stages of this race. Though on to lap 16, we move them. We're now all over the back of DOR Outlaw once again in this race. So we're hopefully going to try and get a bit of a run on him with just five laps to go of this race here. And I will tell you guys now, Sweden Pro's tactics sadly did not pay dividends in the end. There, unfortunately, he would lose out. But this is where stuff gets weird. Outlaw gets completely killed by the inside curve there. And to quote Jeremy Clarkson, a lot of poo shot out as we came in towards the final couple of corners there because, well, I'm impressed I even survived that in all honesty. You know, that was really, really close there. And by the end, though, of the race, we would be able to come home on lap 21 to take the W here. Sweden Pro really, really struggling, though, on that fuel. Was he going to be able to make the car last right the way through to the end? I think it was going to be so, so tight between him, Tigaboo, and DOR out or there. Through the final corner, though, we go to take home the opening race victory in Delta Online Racing Bug Cup there. Really, really happy with that result at the end of the day. The full 100 points there to kick off the season there. Tigabu does come through for P2 there. DOR Outlaw does beat Sweden Pro as well there to come through in at P3 there. And props to Sweden Pro for trying the strategy. Sadly, didn't quite pay off in the end there. Lucky Sod, Brad, Night Flight, DMK6, GTR, Dozer Rocks, and Mercy Phil around at the top 10. And ready for race two then, a reverse top 10 grid. For the second race of the night. Really, really looking forward to this race. Starting all the way down in P10. It's lights out and away we go once again. Now, once again, not getting off to a particularly good start. Off the line, you can see TUS Ballistics gets a rocket ship launch down towards someone. They get very, very lucky. They'll get collected by a little bit of contact on the inside there. And someone's going to come in. And, well, once again, get very, very lucky that we don't get collected once more. They're up the inside of a couple of cars. Are we going to be able to keep it nice and tidy? through the next couple of corners. There we go. Three wide almost through the next corner there. Right around the outside of TUS Ballistics we go here. And now we're going to try and get a bit of a run on at Night Flight 504 there. He defends the inside. We're going to be back up to the racing line there and just get caught on the grass there. A little bit of contact with Lucky Sod there. Luckily, he doesn't get affected by that one there. And that's going to drop me back down to P11 here. But somehow, in a bit of a weird turn of events there, I'm actually going to be able to get a very, very good run through the next corner there. And we'll move ourselves back up a little side by side there, 4P9 there, Tigabu almost makes it three wide as we come there down in towards the hairpin there, he's going to try and go for a bit of a switchback move there, we just clipped the rear of TUS Ballistics here and that's going to give us a bit of a run down the back straight here, are we going to be able to make any sort of move work as we come in towards the fast left hand here on the inside, yeah Ballistics does bail out of that one there, a little bit interesting curve use I think by someone on the proximity arrows there as Ballistic thinks about getting back up the inside but cannot make it work as we're now all over the back of Fujiwara there as we come through the final couple of corners back onto the banking out of the final corner that is very very easy to sim switch if you get it wrong out of there this car definitely much much quicker with sim steering obviously especially with the four wheel drivers we come back down in towards turn one there's going to be a bit of a collection between the guys in front of me there luckily no one does get sent to Nani there around the outside of Fujiwara we go are we going to be able to make any sort of move work there it's a very very long way around the outside but we do get up the inside for the next corner there get on the power just that little bit earlier and that's now going to move us up into P7 of this race so making good progress in the early stages as we now dive up the inside of Lucky Sod there are we going to be able to make that move work it was a bit of a late lunge but we do get it work there as well no contact made between the pair of us as well there sticks runs wide on the exit over the corner and that's now going to be us up into P5 here and now we're going to have a look up the inside of DOR Brad as well they're just that little bit later on the brakes there and that's going to be three overtakes in three corners there I will certainly certainly take over that one yeah very very happy with that one just everything sort of fell into place there we're now gone from P10 to P4 inside two laps of this race it's certainly not a bad start to the second race of the night Sweden Pro though still a good couple of seconds up the road there as the top three him Mercy Phil and those rocks all are very very close to battling for the leader as I don't quite get the run through the final couple of corners to finish off a lap number two but yeah hopefully we can try to close up this gap over the next couple of laps you can see by the start of a lap four just one lap later we've now all over back 
of GTR those rocks as well. They're getting very, very close through to one, dropping the back end ever so slightly over the grass. You can, you, it's a gamble, I'll be honest, but you can, you know, over-rotate the rear end in and try to get it scooped through turn two as well. There's actually Mercy Phil just in front makes a bit of a mistake there. He's going to get a bit loose. And that's going to slow down Doze Rocks as well. We almost go three wide. We do go three wide there. Doze Rocks gives us the run on the inside there. Mercy, Phil, and Rocks are just going to get collected. And that's going to be a nice open door for myself once again. They're getting very, very lucky in a race too. I'll hold my hands up and admit that. And that's now going to be us up, like I said, into P2 of the race there. Once again, just about a 300 foot gap to a Sweden Pro. So hopefully we can try and close up that over the next few laps here. It would actually be a bit of a weird one. We would make the move work. But through the pit stop window there, Sweden Pro would go one lap early. And yeah, unfortunately, we just get caught out in some lapped traffic there. Yeah, we put in a couple of really, really good, you know, sort of high 22 lap times there. Sweden Pro, a bit of a desperate dive bomb there. I think it might have been a bit of a mistake on his behalf as well. I mean, yeah, we nailed a couple of our, you know, almost not qualifying S laps in over the pit stop window there. And we did make it work now up into the lead of the race and the halfway point of a race two. And that would be all she'd right though in the second race of the night there as we now skip on to a lap 21. We will build up a little bit of a gap to a Sweden Pro there. And honestly, the second race probably a little less action packed than the first, despite the reverse of the rhythm. And still, you know, two really, really good front races at the end of the day. And nice, you know, for Delta on their race to come back as well, to kick it off with a couple of race victories in the opening round of this series. Really, really happy with that one. They're out of the final corner and down towards the line. It's going to be two wins, the full 200 points. That is what we're talking about. My first race victory in a proper league in well over a month. You know, I've really hit a drought more recently as well. I'd be yeah, really, really happy with that one there. Sweden Pro second, Lucky Sod, Brad, Fujiwara, Doze Rocks, Tigger, apparently God, Outlaw, and DMK Sticks rounds out the top 10 in the second race of the night that's yeah like i said really really happy with those results you can't really go wrong with two race victories at the end of the day to kick off the season but i'm sure as we move into the next couple of rounds the competition is going to get a whole lot tougher as we have got a lot of the guys that are also well supposedly some of the guys that are doing the british gt are going to come over and have some fun in this as well but you know we'll wait and see you know two race victories to kick off the season hopefully We'll be able to continue on in good form there. And you can see, having a look at the point standings, 200 points, Sweden on 192, Lucky on 188 there. With Tigger, we were 184, tied with Brad and Outlaw rounds out of the top six there. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching this video. Get yourself subscribed if you're new around here as well. And you do want to see more of the Delta Bug Cup highlights on the channel. But yeah, that'll be it from me for this video. Like I said, hopefully you guys have enjoyed. Get yourself subscribed and I will see you guys next time for another video.